Greetings, folks. Welcome to the BLAs. Fancy, right? The Bob Laptop Awards. And don't let this video trigger you, okay? There's a lot of things that are very opinionated here. Obviously, this, this whole thing is essentially opinionated. And it's going to be essentially the best of particular categories strictly based on have I reviewed this chassis? Obviously, I can't give an award to something that I have not used, and this is all laptops covered in the year 2019. Uh, furthermore, something such as the um, Electronics Mag 15U, which would clearly be one of the better Ultra books that I have covered this year, mainly because it was the only one, and I really don't think it's fair to create a category and then just have something win by default. Now, that was a great laptop, but again, if I leave a couple of things out, now you know why. This isn't going to be perfect. I am winging this, and I never use a script, so let's rock and roll. So the best beast of 2019, I used several, the GT 75, the GT76, the uh, Asus Mothership, dear lord. And just because a laptop is more expensive in that category does not give it the win. In fact, I am more price conscious and I put that as a priority pretty much all of the time. And with all of that out of the way, I have to go, surprisingly, with the GT75 Titan. Now, the GT76 Titan would have easily won this category. The reason it doesn't is because it didn't have G-Sync and it didn't feature a MUX switch. Shame on you, MSI. Means the GT75 is going to win for me. And this was a review unit that I had received from HID Evolution. I thought this was a fantastic laptop. It had the G Sync. Yes, it had thinner bezels, but guess what? When I am balls deep in gaming, I don't care about those bezels, okay? I don't even notice it anymore. So I found that to be a very fun laptop to use as a beast. It had amazing cooling great acoustic performance, wonderful speaker audio. It was just a top-notch experience from the Beast category, and that is why I have to give that one the best Beast gaming laptop that I have reviewed in 2019. All right, so this next one is a little bit interesting because I'm calling it Best Price to Value, okay? A little bit different than Bang for the Buck. Bang for the Buck, in my mind, would insinuate Bang, meaning FPS performance for the money. This is something different. The best price to value, as in the whole entire package here, right? As far as the ports, how much storage, what are we getting? What is this thing capable of? And that will go to the Electronics N970TF. This can feature the LGA desktop socketed CPU, which means I can put an i9-9900 non-K in this thing, we also have a 2070 Max P, that is BGA, that is soldered on, 144 hertz screen. I found the webcam to be very nice for 720p. It's got the SD card reader, too many display ports, HDMI. It was very quiet, it was very tuner friendly, it was very easy to work on. By no means was this a show laptop, but when it came down to offering a lot of bang for the buck in that regard, as far as, well, price to value goes, there's a lot there, not just the performance, but all of its features for the money I don't think can be matched by anything out there, no matter how you spec it. So in that regards, nice job electronics. So the best thin and light. Had my hands on a few of these. With that said, the MAG-15 clear winner. This really doesn't need much introduction because all of you have heard of the MAG-15 and once Dave2D put his video out there, which I'm sure has over a million views by now, everybody and their brother was emailing me and commenting, when do you get the MAG-15? When do you get the MAG-15? When are you gonna review the MAG-15? I could go on and on and on. That was by far landslide, the most popular laptop. I still get comments on it every single day. The thread that I started on Notebook Review Forum, I don't know how many hundred pages deep now. This is a very popular laptop back when it released, and it still is today. And the sales on this thing are just moving like crazy. So this is an excellent laptop for the thin and light category. And electronics, you did right by this. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with in the future. Now, the best deal 
could be a little bit controversial because there's a few laptops out there that I have not covered that have had some remarkable deals for this year. But the two that really stand out to me because I have covered these chassis is one, the Helios 300. As a matter of fact, I wrote all of this up a couple of weeks ago and I thought that was going to be the shoe-in winner because at $980 when that was on sale, I believe this was, was this Black Friday? I think it was. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That's a heck of a good laptop. But then this past weekend, I'm talking just a couple of days prior to filming this, the Electronics Mech 15 G2 XR, I believe it is, 1660 Ti, 9750H, twice as much storage going from a 256, it's in the Helios to 512 now. It's got a little bit bigger battery and it's got Electro Boost. So the 1660 Ti in this chassis is as fast as a 1660 Ti can be in a laptop. And it was 999, 140 hertz panel, all the bells and whistles. It's got the same amount of metal as the Helios. And as a result, for an extra 20 bucks, that's the laptop you would want to go for if the two were side by side, again, in my opinion. So I would have to say best deal of the year, I got, it can kind of go either way because I don't know too many people that still have their Helios and have too many regrets, right? That is a great laptop, but if it was me, I would go with the Mech. And I will have links in the description below for all the reviews that I have covered on these two chassis as well as everything else. So let me know your thoughts on that down below. Okay, this one is one of my favorites. Don't let this trigger you, okay? Because this is gonna come awkward at first, but surprisingly at the end, I think you're gonna appreciate this. The biggest disappointment was the Lenovo Legion Y740. Now, before you have a fecal hemorrhage, my disappointment in that is because what it did great, it did so, so great. Lenovo, you gave us a muck switch. And not only that, you gave us G-Sync. Not only that, that chassis design, and it's all metal, it just looked really nice. Not only that, you gave us the best and most unique and most robust RGB solution. I couldn't care less, but I admire it and I think it's cool. This is a great laptop, but the battery is so darn small. And those macro keys on the left-hand side, here's a little fun fact. Out of every laptop that I have reviewed this year, I would be willing to bet my children on the fact that that laptop had more returns than anything else I had covered, and it was because of the macro key placement. You might be able to get used to it, and if so, right on. That's a sweet laptop. But many could not, even against my warning. They bought it anyway and had returned it. Let's not forget here, folks, that I'm on the forums like mad. Even if I'm not posting, I still am eyes and ears all over the place. I know this for a fact, that laptop was returned. Lenovo, macro keys, put them on the right or put them on the top like Asus does. They don't need to be on the left. This is such an awesome laptop. You gave us the MUX, you gave us G-Sync, you gave us beautiful RGB, and honestly, you gave it to us at a pretty good price. Not only that, but you're offering a almost 500 nit display. You guys are crushing it, but a bigger battery is a must. And for those that don't know, you can take the 72 watt hour battery from the 17 inch model and feed that into the 15 inch model, do away of course with the two and a half inch dry bay. That's just not enough. I love that you can do it, okay? But it's not enough of an upgrade. For those that want to venture down that road, you can do that and yes, you're gonna get a little bit extra time out of it and that's great. But we need to be that 80 to 90 watt hours to be competitive. And Lenovo, are you afraid to decimate the competition? Is that what you're doing here? Is that what it is? Okay, fine, I get it. But if you wanna kill it, now you know how. Give us a bigger battery, and rumor has it the next series is gonna do something a little different with the macro, so let's wait and see. So the biggest surprise was the Asus GL531GU. This one was a $900 laptop that I bought from Walmart, had the i5-9300H and a 1660 Ti. Came with a 120 hertz display, like 67% standard RGB. By no means was it a looker. And the brightness was 296 nits. It's just off the top of my head, but it was somewhere around there. So by no means was the panel a joy to look at, but it was smooth. And what I liked about this laptop was its total package, right? It was probably one of the more quiet laptops at load that I didn't have to tune or tweak. Thermally, very impressive machine. 
the speaker audio blew the doors off of 95% of the gaming laptops or all of the laptops that I have ever featured on the channel. It just overall, across every single aspect that actually means something to most gamers, this thing punched way above its weight. And the biggest downsides, honestly, there was two. This particular unit shipped with a single eight gigabyte DIMM of memory. Luckily, there is another slot open. Adding dual channel to that really wakes it up. Again, all stuff that I had revealed in my in-depth review. Once you factor in that, now you're starting to get near that Helios 300 price, right? And as a result, I would be very confident in telling you just spend the extra 50 to 100 bucks with the Helios because you're going to get an i7 and just a better panel. But I cannot deny the fact that the Asus did so much stuff right across the board. Once you add that single channel memory, there are some things there that put a smile on my face. And overall, this was a big surprise for me for 2019. So that award would go to the Asus GL531GU. The laptop that impressed me the most was one that I had reviewed from HID Evolution. This was the GE75 Raider, and this one featured an i9, 8-core, 16-thread, and an RTX 2080 150-watt unit. This thing smashed every single thing I asked it to do. It had a 65-watt-hour battery, so a little bit better than their traditional 51-watt-hour. I only needed a single power supply at 100, excuse me, 280 watts to support this whole entire laptop. The performance of this machine, thermally, absolutely amazing considering it has to dish out 16 threads and 150 watts of an RTX 2080. It came at like 50 decibels was the max volume. The tunability here was outstanding. The performance was great considering it was relatively portable. 17 inches, 144 hertz panel that came in at 400 nits. This laptop, the more I used it, the more I wanted one. As a matter of fact, Steven from Owner Disown could vouch for this. I called him up and I said, dude, he, he reviewed one of these before me, right? I said, buddy, I got to get myself one of these. I can't believe this. This thing is great. It's super cool. It's incredibly powerful for what it's worth. It's Considering the parts inside, it's not too bad to lug around a single power supply. And he's like, yeah, I know. I was just looking at Micro Center and he found some open box ones. And that's a whole other conversation. But we were talking about this machine and just how impressive it was to use as a gaming device. It really didn't have any weak links. And I highly recommend that laptop. Oh, it was so impressive. All right, this one went under your nose. It was a PB Clevo model with G-Sync that I had reviewed from HID Evolution. The interesting part about this laptop is that this was the one that I had requested and worked harder to get more so than any laptop that I have ever reviewed on the channel. This thing meant a lot to me. It, I could get it all black, just murdered out without the EVOC stickers. It had a muck switch, it had G-Sync, it had plenty of storage. I think it had a 62 watt hour battery. It had Thunderbolt 3. Did I mention it could be all blacked out? I don't know, maybe that's showing my age, but I think that is really, really cool. What did it have, a 9750H and a Max P 2070? Bit of a design flaw with this, however, is the rubber feet on the bottom of this unit would suffocate the, uh, the intake for the fans. And once you prop this thing up, it was very cool. Now. I prop up my laptops when I use them for daily driving because of the ergonomics and I'm not straining my back to lean over so far, but that's not something I typically feature unless it's a must. And on this laptop, propping it up is an absolute must. And I call this laptop the sleeper because it just kind of flew under everyone's nose. Not a lot of people heard of EVOC. Not a lot of people know of Clevo or Tong Fang for that matter. And when you mention those names, people think that it's just some off-brand without even realizing that those companies have been making laptops probably longer than most. And they do a really, really good job and cater to the enthusiast. The list goes on. So I think Clevo did a really good job with this machine. And I think it flew under the nose of many people because it didn't say Dell. So Honestly, that would be one to look at if you can get your hands on it. Micro Center sells one under the name PowerSpec. It's nowhere near representing the one that we had from HID. A lot more metal on that HID unit. 
It's all black on that HID unit. It had Thunderbolt 3. Overall, it was just kind of an, uh, the, the Lexus version of the Toyota, so to speak, for that particular model. But if you can get your hands on that chassis and you're in the market for something pretty awesome, then check it out. Of course, links in the description below for my review on that unit. It was, and still is, a pretty awesome device. So to wrap this up, if I had to offer laptop of the year based on the comments that I have received on the channel for the year 2019, and it would probably be a tie between the MAG-15 and the Helios 300. These were incredibly popular. I get messages on them both, absolute daily really happy people with these two laptops and if i had to say which one's the laptop of the year it's going to be a toss-up between those two and that's honestly trying to take as much opinion out of it as possible and just based on the fact that i do read as many comments as i can even if i'm not notified of these i will go in and manually check them yes i don't get them all but i do a really good job i think of getting to as many as I possibly can. And those two laptops seem to have more love for them than anything that I have covered on the channel so far. So if I had to go laptop of the year, I would say both of those. And that is strictly based on what I read and see from the community. Okay, that's gonna do it. I hopefully you enjoyed this. Pretty casual, pretty laid back. What are your thoughts? Let's not try to you know argue too much. And I'll, I'll see you in the comments below.